Actually, the ball boy is like that, uh, it's the same. Uh. Okay, come. I see you. So you can see I'm running the PowerPoint directly from the OPC. Let me bring the keyboard down. Okay, so let's start. So the title is a Pentium 3. La. So I'm sure many of you may be wondering what is what is exactly is a Pentium 3, right? especially if you have not lived through that era. Okay, so I first I need to give some background. What is this? Okay, so Pentium 3 is a very old CPU. Uh. Okay, it's re released in the previous century. Uh. <laughs> okay, 25 years old. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay, so okay, see this clock speed? It's only up to 1.4 gigahertz. Okay, front side bus also, also 100 is in yeah, 100 RA 33 megahertz. Okay, so there are actually uh two types of CPU sockets for this. Uh. Okay, one of them is socket 370. Uh the other one is uh slot one. Oh yeah, I'm gonna take it out. Let me take it out. What exactly is the slot one and one here? And, uh, this is a slot one. It's a Pentium 3 come in two forms. Yeah. Okay. So what's so special about the Pentium 3, right? Okay, so Pentium 3 is the first CPU from Intel that comes with SSC instructions. Okay. This is single instruction multiple data. Okay, so basically one instruction can operate on multiple data set. Okay. So uh before that. Yeah, FMX only works on integer, so SSC works on floating point. Okay, so that's one of the key advantage of the Pentium Three. Okay, so why am I building this test bench, right? Because of these two main reasons. Because uh, okay, I my one of my hobbies is retro computing, so I deal with a lot of these old cards, uh. So, I sometimes re receive cards from people, and I need to have an easy way to test whether those cards work. Then I have some existing PCs, but every time I get this card, I need to go down to my desktop PC and try to, you know, take out my existing card, put one card in. Then, you know, all these PCs are very fragile. They are quite old already. Eh? The more I do this, uh, I'm increasing the risk I may damage them. So I decide to make a special test setup uh, for me to easily sort the cards like this. How okay. many cards you receive per day? Not, not per day. <laughs> la. Yeah, no, no, not so much. Not so much. But enough for me to not do that too often uh, to my existing PCs. Okay, and also easy to evaluate any vintage OS and software because I can swap the hard disk easily over there. Okay, so what operating system am I, am I running on it? Uh? Okay, I'm running two OS, two sets. One of them is DOS 6.22 and Windows 3.1. Okay, which I will not demo here. Uh, okay, but I have it there. So in case I want to run any 16-bit programs. Uh. The other one is uh, Windows 98 second edition. Okay, so why this particular one? Because in the retro community, there's this consensus that Windows 98 SE, right, is actually the best uh, for retro machines because uh, it's still it's one of the last that still have very good DOS support. Okay, and I install them on separate partitions, which is actually challenging, which I'll come to. Okay, so this is the specifications. It's on me. Okay, so it's Pentium 3, 700 megahertz. It's on the Transcend motherboard. Okay, with all these chipsets. Uh, okay. Then notice that in these slots are AGP, PCI, ISA. Now this most important motherboard don't have any of these already. Uh. It's all PCI Express today. Okay, but uh, I chose this motherboard because of these three different types of connectors. So it's easy to test. Okay, it, it can support a wide range of cards. Uh, it has a 512 MB of RAM. Again, this is a specifically chosen number. This motherboard can support up to 1.5 gig. But for Windows 98, right, if you go above 512 MB, right, 512 MB is a bit difficult. Uh. There will be some configuration issue. Okay, so it's best to stay with this. Uh, it runs on the SSD, uh, SATA SSD. Okay, reasonably modern. Uh, okay, because uh, the older IDE hard drives uh, are harder to come by. And even if you can, you can find them, right, the condition may not be good. Uh. You don't know when they will fail. Uh. Okay, so I have a hot swap as a SATA bay. So it's easy for me to change the drive. Okay, and then I'll convert the SATA to IDE. Because motherboard runs ID, obviously, yeah, it's too old for SATA. <laughs> okay, uh, it has three types of uh, cards. One of them is the graphic card is running on Metrox. Okay, Metrox is not a known name today, really. The Metrox company is still around today, but uh, at that time, right, Metrox, you can think of it something like one of them with the uh, Nvidia and AMD today. It's up there with them. Yeah, Metrox is not as powerful today, already. Yeah. 
Yes, so correct. If you wanted to do anything like playing games, then you want to have, I don't know, NVIDIA or, or ATI. ATI, exactly. Yes. Uh, one thing Metro is good for is their driver support. It's very stable. Because I this, this has a test setup, right? I don't want driver support to cause an issue with my other cards. I'm not playing games on this. Yeah. yeah. Okay, then uh, for sound card, right? Uh, I'm using a Sound Blaster card from Creative. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which is period correct. At that time, Sound Blaster was a very popular thing. This Wonderbot has integrated sound, but it's very bad. It's AC97. Okay. Then, uh, again, Motherboards at that time don't come with network connection. So I add a 3 com card. PCI card. Again, it's 100 Mbps. It's not the gigabit of today. Okay. Okay, so uh, why this particular setup, right? It's because Pentium 3 Motherboards, right, are among the last to have ISA stock. This Motherboard has one ISA. After that, from Pentium 4 onwards, it's very rare for Motherboard to have ISA already. Then, uh, but for Pentium 3 to Pentium 4, right, there's a huge jump in power consumption. So uh, when you have higher power consumption, means more heat, then you need a bigger cooling solution. And since this is open air, right, then it be very noisy. Yeah. So I prefer something that is cooler. Okay, then it has a 100 megahertz front side bus. Okay, this is uh, the last, because after that, Pentium 4 is a lot faster already. Okay, so there's a reason for this, because some PCI card like 3DFX will do, right, they cannot accept a faster front side bus. Yeah, so this, this is the reason. And very good with the tiny driver support. Then compared to Pentium 2 before that, right? Of course, Pentium 3 is faster. Right? And it's more period correct also. Okay. Okay, so I'll first start with the hardware challenges, right? So these issues, right? okay? So, okay, motherboard is built in this time. If you go to Wikipedia, there's even a term for it. It's called capacitor plate. So for motherboards made in 1999 to 2007, right? Yeah, they, the capacitor they use basically are not of good quality. So... A lot of the electronics from the era, if you look at them today, right, a lot of them has this issue of bulging capacitors or leaking capacitors. So basically, it's bad. Lah. Like, for example, you see, I put this in my tester, right? This is a 1,500 UF capacitor. It measures at less than 10% of the value. So obviously, this is not good. Lah. Okay. So I have to replace them. So I have to recap all the capacitors I see. So I use a throw desoring tool lah, for this purpose. So it's easier. It's basically a a uh, sucker with a, uh, it used to be the heated tip. Okay, so we just suck out the solder. Okay, so I replace all the capacitors that I see are 40. Uh. Okay, so you can see for the left and right, uh, the difference. Okay. Okay, so another issue with this motherboard is that the 12 volt rail I discovered it to be 40. Uh. Because initially when I use this motherboard, right, the CPU fan did not work and the sun blaster light also did not work. Uh. Okay, the reason is because these two uh, devices, they run off the 12 volt rail. Okay, so uh, it's very difficult to troubleshoot where exactly the port is. So I inject the 12 volt from the other connector, the case fan connector. That's why you see this line here, right? Yeah. That's a super bad hat. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I inject it from the Molex inside. Then, okay, now the CPU fan, as you can hear, see, the CPU fan is working now. Okay. Okay, then another issue is the sound blaster live and fire issue. Okay, so uh, basically, uh, when I try to initialize a sound blaster card, either by installing the drivers or uh, running the DOS drivers, right? The system just hang and it just cannot start anymore. So at first I was wondering, is, uh, is it a hardware problem or not? I wouldn't know, especially if this kind of system this old. Uh, hardware problem is actually very common. Right? Uh, or it just basically outright fail. So... It took me a long time. Then finally, I Google. Uh, I went to this Vogons. Uh. Vogons is actually a forum for vintage, uh, for retro computing enthusiasts. Then I found this key paragraph. So they say that creative engineers use a number of features in their PCI implementation that were not in the PCI spec, via only implemented spec. So people say try to avoid using creative sound blaster live or digital cards together with this particular sub bridge. Okay. So why was this an issue? Is because uh, the interlock okay, they are this creative card has a problem with interrupt line sharing with other PCI devices. Okay, so how to avoid this problem? You try to error different PCI slots uh. because different PCI slots are wired slightly differently. So you hit the particular PCI slot which interrupt is not shared with other devices, then you solve the problem. Yeah, so I really could try and error there. I found that particular combination. 
<laughs> okay, I wouldn't have thought of this. Uh. Yeah, lucky this guy got documented. Okay, so another thing is, uh, next one is dual booting. Doors have middle side in. Because OS of that era, right, they are not meant to dual boot. Okay, you can see these uh, limitations. Uh. Doors have Windows 98 will only install to the first primary partition. Okay, they will only boot on the first primary partition. And then the last limitation is if you use Microsoft partitioning tool, it cannot create more than one primary partition. So how are you going to reconcile all this? Okay, because here my requirement is that I want to install DOS and Windows 98 on separate partition. Because it's never wise to install two operating systems on the same partition, right? You, you cause problems. Uh. Yeah. Okay. So first, right, okay, this is my partition layout on my 64 gig SSD. I create two primary partition. I don't use Microsoft tool. I use a tool called the free DOS at this. Uh, that one can create more than one primary partition. Then uh, I have a uh, extended partition for my data. Basically, uh, in case if I, for whatever reason, I need to reformat the OS partition, it doesn't affect my data. Okay. So I partition using free DOS FTs. The first one, the DOS 6.22, I installed to the first primary partition. So that's fine. Okay, so there's a trick here. So there's another tool called grab for DOS, right? You can hide this partition temporarily. So after that, you run the Windows 98 setup, right? You cannot see this primary partition. So now you install to this partition. Okay, so after that, right? Once you install finish, right? You, then you can unhide the primary partition. Yeah. So I, I found it from this website. Lah. Well, it's a very neat trick. Lah. Hide the, the partition. Yeah, let me next slide. Okay, so now I, I install both. How do I switch between both of them? Okay, so uh, this is how okay, this is how I did it. You can use Grab for DOS, right? To set the active partition. At the let's say you have both from DOS, you set the DOS partition to be active. You have to set uh you have to both from Windows, you set the other one to be active. Then the master book record will just jump there and go. Okay, that's why I created a DOS menu option inside. Okay, the next one is Sound Master compatibility. Okay, so DOS games, right, of that era, right, they like ISA sound cards. ISA, specifically ISA Sound Blaster sound cards that operate at these addresses. Okay, so this is an example of the setup program for Descent. You can see these numbers here, 220, Interrupt 5, DMA 1, the music also at port 388. Okay, so these are the typical addresses. The problem is this is only available on ISA. If you use a PCI sound card, right, they cannot access these addresses. So games from that era, when you remember when you migrate from ISA to PCI, always got issue. Okay, so how to do people solve this? Of course, the easiest if you have multiple have ISA slot, right? Use an ISA sound card. Okay, that's the easiest way. But sometimes if you don't have ISA sound card or the motherboard does not have ISA, then you need a way to use the PCI sound card for their purpose. So how people do it is that there's a something called a terminal stay resident program. Basically, program that run in the background, you start this program, it will listen to these addresses and then transmit the data to the PCI sound card address. So now the PCI sound card can work in DOS. Okay. Okay. So I have two sound cards here. One of them is the integrated one, AC97 in the motherboard. The other one is the Sound Blaster line. Okay. So for the integrated one, AC97, right, via release uh, TSR, you can see down here. You load this TSR and then it, and you need to set the appropriate BIOS settings, then uh it will basically pretend to be a sound blaster card. Okay. Okay, so what I found is that the digital sound effect is very good, but the OPL music, OPL basically means like a MIDI, something like MIDI music is very quite bad like, because there's a lot of crackles. Huh? Okay, so I had the other one, which is another TSR to, to re redirect to Sound Blaster Light. Okay, this tool like right, is very new, uh, it's a 2023 tool. Uh, People are still creating programs to do this. Okay. And it's not just that, it supports uh Intel high definition audio as well. Okay, which is a standard still used by, by many modern PCs. Okay, so you can see when you start it right, SBEMU, it detects that I have a sound blaster live. You actually redirect all the traffic there, all the sound traffic there. Okay, what well, I found that this the mini music is very good for SBEMU, but the digital sound effect is a bit higher pitch. Right? You can hear the high pitch. Right? Okay. So that's why I have these two options, depending on what I want. Okay, then for for Windows, right? Okay, so I would find that I found this issue uh, because I prefer to use Sound Blaster Live. But when I install the via drivers, right, it, it overrides the Sound Blaster drivers in direct. Okay, so 
DirectX is still used today, uh, by the way. So this is DirectX, I think it's 9.0C. So it seems uh, seems like uh when I start fire, right, then all the sound goes there, then the creative cannot cannot work. Okay. Okay, so I need to introduce two concepts here. One is a VXD, one is a VM. So Windows in that time, right, there is something called a VXD driver. Okay, in introduced in Windows 3.3x, 3 .3 stop in Windows ME. Okay, so this kind of driver, right, it can have raw access to memory and hardware, very fast performance, but less stable. So in Windows 98, Microsoft released the Windows driver model, which is still used today. Uh, okay, so this, how is it different from VXD? Because Microsoft recognized this issue, right? They do isolation, right? So it basically prevent the driver if it misbehaves, right, from crashing the whole system. Uh, okay, so, but the problem is, right, on, because WM was still relatively new at that time. We know that it was introduced only Windows 98. So people say, don't use the WDM drivers, they are slower and issue with games. If you can use VSD drivers, okay? Okay, so why is this an issue? Because VIA use WDM and uh, some Russell Live I use VXD. Okay, so DirectX, right? It's suspected that they prefer WDM. If they see a WDM, they will take it. And also, uh, let's say you do, you can, there's something, this creative VXD installation, right? If you install later, right, it cannot sort of dislodge the via driver. Once it's there, it's there already. Nobody can push it out. Okay. So there is a specific way to do it. Again, I reference someone, uh, uh reference the forum. He did this specific step. You see, this is what you should do. Don't install the via driver. Disable the AC97, which is here. Install DirectX 9.0C. Install some browser driver. Then install motherboard driver and graphics, graphics drivers. Yeah. So this is a specific order. You deviate from this order, it may not be stable. And it's true. Uh, I tried a few times, then this order is really the best. Okay. So I come to my, my last slide already. So uh, as you can see, right, setting up a vintage computer is very difficult, right? It's challenging, right? Uh, a person really needs to know a lot more uh, than, a, if, than a user of a modern machine. You just start and work really. Okay. Uh, information is hard to find. Okay. Remember, internet at that time was not that common as today. Okay. So, and lesser smaller computer market, so pe less people document this. Okay, and then the last one is, I really not sure how this knowledge will be useful to all of you. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe if you want to set up a retro PC like this, then uh, yeah, yeah I, will, I will save you a lot of time. Okay. Slide, the drive ratios were, yeah, they were common at the time. Yeah, quite. Okay, uh, I wonder how much time do I have? Is it finished already? 20 minutes? Yeah. 10 minutes, uh. okay. You want to see any demo? Half okay, half life. Uh. Okay, you can. <laughs> yes. Uh, I saw something called demon. What? Sorry? Oh, it's a drive emulator. Yeah, drive back emulator. In, back in the day, if you had um, lost your game CD, but you oh, did have, a, have an image of it, then you could use that in order to. So you 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 rip the ISL, you feed it into Daemon tool, Daemon tool makes a bunch of virtual CD drives, mm -hmm. and then plug the ISL for the phone. Okay, I I shall show the the train. I know half life starts with the train, right? Yeah, yeah. I start for I show for. So the question is, who bought that game? I didn't know that I had it. I'm not sure I have bought it. There's a reason I know what demons are. Okay, this is a bit boring. How about I so treated the 3D map? You want to see? This print drive is very long. Yeah, the best one you can see the graphics capability. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. It's correct. Missing capacitors? Yeah. Okay, wait. Uh. I think let me, let me quit. Let me quit this. <laughs> no, not with, not with a full screen game. Yeah, like, 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 like,
Which one? This is BCI. I think the Okay, I put it lying down. Okay, it's because it's a bit too tall. The one I ordered. You broke the card. You broke the card. Yeah, so I bet it. Okay. How old is Amin Mahathir? Should be 1999, 25 years. Normal. Very common. Okay, since you asked, right, I'll show you how I switch to DOS. Okay, let me restart. If you need to like, you know, how to like, get to a Google Microsoft. Yeah, I cannot. Mm -hmm. oh. Multiple operating systems. Yeah, I was talking to you. Yeah. Let's try it again. Okay, I can show the book menu. Uh, let me hide video. Okay, we'll hide this one first. Okay, so book menu. Wait, where did it go? It disappeared. disappeared. Uh, no, I scared it's actually this video uh, adapter cannot process the resolution. There you go. <laughs> yeah, it's possible. It's, it's not. Uh, sometimes it goes to a bit weird. Lah. It's like 720 or something. I think I cannot see. So yeah. you memorize the... Ah, okay. okay. I memorize all the way to the bottom. Oh. Okay, so this reboot to down 6 by 22. I got reboot down. Ah, it's booty, yeah. Okay. Oh no, I think it's the resolution problem. Why did you down from actual Oh, okay. Okay, Windows three point one is running on DOS. Yeah. It cannot, it's not installed standalone. Okay, it's the same problem again. Right? I need to wait for the DCP address, which it, it cannot get. Right? So you will time out after about a few seconds. Right? Or maybe 30 seconds. Right? What did you say? Static engine? Uh, can also. Right? Then, then can work also. Because at home I use DCP. Right? Then, you know. <laughs> I, I plug in. Set to one. Uh, set to one like, permanent address. Yeah. Then you. What is the virus like? <laughs> uh, I, I hope it's okay la. It has no service running la, also. You you actually blue screen after a while to show the yes or no. I think but I don't know whether is it hang or not. It's stuck, yeah, it's stuck now. I don't know. I hope it works. Lah. In the meantime, you all got any questions? Yeah. It should recap every capacitor of you only replace those that are visually damaged okay uh i tried to replace most of them the the big ones uh the small ones i didn't uh, even not damaged ones i tried okay so it's okay so i say yes for address you want to see future message you will screen that you will load in i hope it works uh, uh windows 3.1 have you can run ie5 yes ie5 is the last one for windows 3.1 it cannot la. <laughs> it, but I think I I think it's a resolution it cannot accept. Yeah, because I didn't test the trip one with the video capture card. Yeah, I think it's it's stuck. Don't go direct. Yeah, like, don't people. Yeah, it's like a portable display. Yeah, no, because I need to actually put on the zoom uh, to show on zoom. So I need to capture the display. I think the, the resolution cannot show up. Yeah. Yeah, I need to capture here. So yeah, the resolution cannot show. Yeah. So around the same time as Windows 3.1, it used to be MT 4.0. Ah. I used to install it from 4 clock very, very fast. Oh, yeah, 3.5. Yeah, it's stuck already. I think the resolution cannot show. Yeah. Uh okay. Okay, but it's not. I need to connect directly, yeah. Uh. Let me try, ah. Uh.
I don't know. I've not tried this. Uh, whether it will work or not. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> it's a resistant problem. Hello, man. It's 16 colors. Oh, yeah, I've exceeded. Okay, so, yeah. So, this is a real one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like okay, you see, uh, I have IE5 down here. This is IE5. Of course, of course it will not load, but yeah, it works. Yeah, okay, so let me shut it down. Exit. Oh, okay, the residual works. Okay. Uh, I think I'll just leave my setup here. Wait after the all the speakers complete, then you can all can play with it, lah. You'll just you'll just point the year of like certain parts to go back. Okay.